welcome to this webcast today on how you can uh, architect uh, SQL queries for multiple database platforms using a single UI. My name is Anil Mahadev and I'm, I'm the uh, principal solutions architect for the database uh, data tools here at IDERA. What we'll be covering today is to, uh, first and foremost, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, pose your questions in the GoToWebinar Q&A box. And uh, if you're having, uh, uh, if I can get a show of hands uh, that you can actually see my screen and hear me clearly. Awesome. Um, uh, the goal of today's presentation uh, is going to be on how you can build uh, queries on uh, on these uh, on these solutions. And today we'll be taking a look at uh, Rapid SQL, uh, which is our flagship uh, uh, component in our DB Power Studio product family. Rapid SQL primarily helps you to boost uh, database developer productivity by writing queries really fast. And it also helps you to um, uh, build and uh, and look at any kind of uh, optimization that you would uh, want to do with uh, uh, with your databases. So today we'll be primarily be focusing on Microsoft SQL Server, and uh, I'll also show you how a query can be built using Oracle as well. So with that, um, one of the key uh, benefits that we have here is what's new in the new uh, Power Studio families that we have added support for uh, this product line, uh, which is support for Amazon Redshift and for the DB Optimizer product, we've added support for Postgres. So here you can see we have Amazon Redshift here and here we have support for Postgres. And now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and switch screens and I'll go ahead and log into my Rapid SQL environment. Can everybody see my Rapid SQL environment here, please? Okay. So, on the left hand side, uh, one of the fundamental aspects of any database professional is to come into uh, the database and connect and, uh, and start writing the SQL queries. Here, what we have is the ability for you to actually achieve that in multiple ways. One of the uh, primary ways is to actually use our IntelliSense that we have. So you can actually go into here and look at from the schema level. So here I can actually just do a select start from sales LT dot, and it should go ahead and populate the list of tables. I can, I can do it in this way, or I could actually uh, go ahead and start building the query using the query builder. So that's what we're gonna be taking a look at here. So here, I'll launch the query builder. And here, I can actually go ahead and select a group of tables and I just say add. Then Rapid SQL will automatically go ahead and add those tables, including if they're related, they'll actually have those relationships. But what you can do is you can actually go ahead and, and start visually building them. So here, if I put in like uh, address ID to this, so I can actually drag a relationship like this to that. So here, if I go and, and drag the relationship with your primary key table to the customer ID here, and then there you get the relationship. The same thing you can do here as well. So here I can go ahead and add it to one of them. And finally, here from this customer table to the customer address, you can add the primary key foreign key relationship. So as I'm building this, you will see that at the bottom screen that it's actually giving me the query. So what I can do is I can just copy this and then I can go back to my um, iSQL window and paste it. And I can also go ahead and format this. So let me just go ahead and format the SQL. Looks pretty good. And then I can also go ahead and uh, add this to my script library. So the script library enables you to add user-based scripts. So here, for example, I'm looking at the AdventureWorks SQL query. 
So I can actually go ahead and do that. And uh, once I'm done with this, I'm brought with this dialogue that I can actually instantiate at any moment's notice. So here you can see I have a hotkey for the iSQL window. So here, if I do control uh, seven, and I have launched Rapid SQL for the first time, and then I just hit control seven, I get this query right away. And then I can actually go ahead and run this. And it gives me, if, there, if the condition matches, it'll give me the result set. If it does not, it does not give me a result set. Now, the same thing I can do with Oracle, what I can do is I can go into my tables here. And once I'm connected to it, you'll see that I have a huge list here. So what I can do now is I can actually go into the Query Builder. And it's actually going to go ahead and, and pick from whichever schemas I need. From here, I have a lot of schemas. So I can pick from whichever I, I have. So here, if I look at one of the schemas here, I don't have any tables. I can pick from, let's say, uh, MD data here. Or let me go to one of the other ones. Let's see if we have some tables. Okay, good. So here we have some audit trails and some of these here. So I can actually go ahead and build this here as well. The purpose of us showcasing this is to enable you to uh, appreciate how, how fast we can go ahead and build these queries within Rapid SQL. And the same holds true for um, any of the solutions. So, so let's say that you're a developer and then you wanted to go ahead and uh, your manager comes back and says, Anil, I need this to be done uh, with this uh, specification. You can go into Rapid SQL and go ahead and start building the query as per the specification and uh, and execute those queries. So here it's running in a VM, so apologies for the slowness, but it's almost done here. So it again depends on the number of columns that each table has. So that's based on how it brings in all the information. So while it's doing this, let's uh, go ahead and launch one more instance of Rapid SQL. And uh, I will show you some other tips and tricks with regards to this. So once I'm done with it, we should be able to look at this query here. So now it's populating this here as well. Let me just go ahead and open this up. So here we have SQL Server. And if I go ahead and um, connect to this as well. You will notice that you can also go ahead and kickstart things by instantiating this with a new project. And if you're having a version control system that you want to go ahead and put all of your queries, you can do so. So you can actually go ahead and say a new project, and you can just call it as uh, AdventureWorks LT. And from here, I can actually uh, create this from a database. So here I'm choosing the server. And here I'll just pick the AdventureWorks LT database. And from the schemas, I'll pick the sales LT schema because that's the one that has all the tables. And you can choose whatever you want. So here I'll just choose, I just want the tables and the related uh, options here. So here I can actually just do a select all. If I choose next, here's where you can actually go ahead and, and choose what options you need. So you can either choose ANSI, you can choose UTF for any of the file encoding. And then you can also generate drop scripts if, if it does not exist. So you can do that as well. And you can also retain the owner or you can change the owner to whatever is gonna be uh, this. So if you already have, let's say a DBO, so I can actually go ahead and do this, or you can just say retain owner and uncheck that. Now what I can do is I can uh, hit finish. It's gonna go ahead and generate the actual script for me here and uh, and push those changes to a iSQL window. So some of the tables, if it does not find it, it's fine, but you can go ahead and generate a report. And uh, here you can see what are the tables it got 
generated. So we can see all of this here in action. And once that is done, we should be able to go ahead and hit continue. And it pops up this list. And you can go ahead and add this and, and double click on it and start working with this here as well. One of the other key benefits about building these multi, uh, architecting these SQL queries in multiple databases is that right now within the same project, I can actually go ahead and add database objects like directly from here. And I can also go ahead and choose some database objects that I would like to have it connected. And from here, I can just choose whichever schemas I want. So here, if I just choose the sys schema, and uh, here I can go ahead and choose a couple of tables from there. So I can just pick maybe one of these. And again, just go ahead and hit finish. So it's actually reverse engineering the code back. And then once it's done, it should give you the option to open this up as part of the same project. Can I just get a show of hands to make sure that we're all on the same page, that you're following what I'm, I'm demonstrating? Perfect, thank you. So the workflow is very important here because for any organization, especially since we're living in a very DevOps centric area, this can really help you architect those queries and, and, and put that as part of your DevOps pipeline and connecting from your to your version control into your uh, CI CD pipelines. So uh, Rapid SQL does a fantastic job of generating these queries. And again, like I said, depending upon the size of the columns, and, uh, and what it's uh, going through, you can actually see what it has there as well. So not all of them will be processed, but in most of the time, uh, depending upon how you have and what permissions you have. Here, I wanted to simulate that there are certain permission challenges that we do not have. Uh, so that's why you're giving you these error messages, but not to worry. Yeah, if you're having the appropriate permissions, you should be able to get this working. So. So I'm going to go ahead and, and pause this out of here, and then and uh, and once I'm done with it, I should be able to go ahead and extract it. But the next thing that we're going to be covering is the ability for you to report on some of these. So, for example, here it brought in this here as well. So again, I can go ahead and uh, link this from here. Link these two here. Now here you can see if I wanted to do select a couple of these, go ahead and select here as well. And there you go. So now that I've built this, I can do a control A and I can do a control B here as well. So I can Paste this, and this will be all my Oracle related code. So I can probably just insert a comment here somewhere. And just say Oracle code. Now, what's really cool about this is as you're developing this, you can put this into multiple workspaces. So now in the new workspace, I can instantiate this and start working with well, my SQL Server stuff. And then I can just switch between workspaces and just go back to my oracle stuff and if i want to work with sql i can go to my sql workspace so that's where you can enhance this and uh and design this uh, queries for multiple databases uh, the other option that uh, a lot of people uh, would like to take a look at is our explain plan so here you can use our our, our explain plan on how you want to go ahead and, and do it so now that I've done this, I can actually just execute this along with an explain plan. It's gonna go ahead and, and generate here. So let me go ahead and 
for this year. And we'll execute that. So now that I'm, I'm doing this here, I can actually go ahead and, and leverage this here as part of it. And uh, once that is done, uh, you can see that we have the explain plan. You can also go ahead and view this as a tree as well as a graph as well. Now what I can do is I can actually uh, 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 leverage this here as well into a lot of uh, you know um, other I can save this uh, plan as well as part of my query optimization I can save it as a SQL script so I can just save it like that and once that is done I can actually go ahead and and leverage any of these uh, statement statistics that will help me to build much better queries as we move forward today's webinar is going to be a little shorter than our usual uh, uh, webinar. So right now, I would like to go ahead and pause and uh, ask if we have any questions, uh, please. Simona, do we have any questions? No, I don't see any questions so far. Okay. So um, a just quick show of hands. Uh, did you folks find this useful? and? Uh, uh, did you um, have any other feedback for us? Please type it in the Q&A box or in the chat window, and we will incorporate that for our future uh, webinars. And for those of us joining us here in, in the United States, uh, we wish you and your uh, loved ones a very happy Thanksgiving from Idera. And uh, if there are no other questions, I would like to uh end this webinar here and i would like to thank you all for attending and uh we'll see you in the next one thank you and have a fantastic weekend